All right, y'all. I uh, hit my daily drawdown here. Uh, 3K loss uh, here in the London session. I'm going to tell you why. Um, I don't want to reset the account. I thought about it. Um, I'm trying to learn to control my impulses. If I have to, like, if I actually hit the maximum loss and uh, I got to reset the account, uh, then I will. But that being said, uh, it's going to be until uh, tomorrow at 5, 5 p.m. that I can trade again. Uh, so, uh, I'm not going to impulsively buy a reset. This is very painful for me to say. Um, if I bought a reset, I could get funded in three days, 3,600, 3,600, 1,800. And y'all know, I, I know that y'all think that that's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But no, that's pretty much how I roll. It's just like drawdown or max because I'm just trying to get funded. So, oh man, this is very painful. Um, I'm going to tell you the risk management mistakes that I made. Uh, I had a whole session going, a whole recording, and I decided to scrap that. I didn't want to show that. So um, let's start with the price analysis misvaluation that I made, and then and then we'll get on to the uh, and then we'll get on to the risk management, and um, we'll go from there. So. I think that my trade idea is going to end up playing out anyways. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I, I, I think that we are going to come and run these highs. It's just basically my idea. I thought that we were not going to end up running this low. We were drawing down into these lows and we almost, almost made a pretty wild run during the London session down to 284. Uh, and run that low, which uh, that was Friday, June 23rd, New York AM low. We did not do that, but we did run all this sell side liquidity. So using my breaker block projections, uh, I thought that we were going to come down into New York opening gap, come down into this uh, BISI, and then start to run these highs. Which, had I applied proper risk management, that idea, you know, would be invalid, but still would have worked. So, I'll tell you what I did. Uh, as you know, I like to cost average into uh, trades. So, uh, as we came down first, you know, you see... I made a video recording today of this move I made. So I made, I was up on the account today and uh, I was still trying to follow this long. So I was long one here. I made another five points and I mean, I was hitting it. And first two contracts came on here. Okay. That sh this should have been one contract. So let's just talk about the risk management. 50% first contract, or two contracts came on there. See, 336.75, no, 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 it actually didn't even come there. It came here, 330, it came right there. So two contracts came on there and that should have been one. It really shouldn't have even been that wick in efficiency. All things considered, I should have turned on my 30-minute chart and, and looked at where we were actually drawing, which was obviously at sell-side liquidity. So this should have been one contract, okay, not two. That's, that was basically what killed me because at this point, my trade would have almost been all the way back to break even right now. That, that really hurts a lot. I mean, even though I was um, like 40 points off, a huge drawdown. I still, with my cost averaging in, 
man, that really, that extra contract really killed me badly. Uh, that should have been one contract. Um, started to cost average in, pyramid into some positions here. So one position, I was using this old new week opening gap. So one entry came on at 330.50, that's new week opening gap high. Uh, second long entry came on at 324 quarters. That was new week opening gap CE. So in hindsight, the new week opening gap high by that point should have seen what the market was doing and it was drawing to sell side liquidity. Um, and then 320.50, that was uh, midpoint of this order block. And then I started to take contracts off as I was going heavy into drawdown. And uh, wasn't enough, wasn't enough. So, from a price analysis standpoint, what did I miss? You know, obviously, we were drawing down into the sell side liquidity. Price has kind of already thoroughly examined this new week opening gap, and I'm not sure how relevant it still is, but I'm going to leave it on the chart anyways. Uh, it was not a good, it was not a good entry. New week opening gap high in this circumstance. You know, looking at 30 minute chart, hourly chart. Uh, was not it's not a good place to enter new week opening gap CE was not a good place to enter I mean it could have been a good place for one contract to be perfectly honest like even with that much drawdown which is a lot of drawdown but it still would have been okay um, you know turtle soup entry here was available uh, let me show you uh, if we had any breaker block projections, so we have a low, we have a high, it's not there. We have a high, low, and a higher high. So that's your ICT breaker right there. And let's see if we got a standard deviation projection that got us there. Yeah, pretty much moved three standard deviations down. Let's see the two and a half. Yeah, so you can see the two and a half standard deviations confirmed the 15 minute or 30 minute sell side liquidity from this breaker. And that was the play. Um, so, you know, from a price analysis perspective, I, I was doing okay, like Asian session, you know, average entry was there, got out there, made uh, 872 fake dollars there uh, and then the last contract I took out for a scratch or a small loss excuse me took it for a loss I got long one more contract made another five points so that was a hundred dollars fake fake dollars there so at that point I had 900 extra dollars drawdown I had 30 thirty nine hundred dollars of drawdown um, and although this was an atrocious entry I mean a horrid entry if it were one contract and if I didn't enter in at new week opening gap high, uh, eventually it would have caught on to what the market was doing. And at this point, that position would pretty much be at break even right now. Uh, and probably in the next few hours, we'll, we will go into, it would have gone into profit. Um, that being said, I'm uh, on top step. So, you know, this is not real money. Um, my downside risk if I have to reset this account is another $100, uh, which all things being told is pretty cheap. Um, so. Um, it's gonna be Three hundred seventy-five dollars in in uh, was that July fifteenth. So um, I have seven trading days to get funded before I'd have to pay the uh, second month. Which, if I have to pay the second month, is not something I want to do, but. Uh, You know, I can't really afford to start another combine today. 
um, I can't really afford to reset it uh, unless I absolutely have to. So tomorrow uh, we're going to be working with uh, $2,000 of drawdown instead of three, dollars $2,176 of drawdown. So um, I can get funded by the end of this week if I if I hit two profit targets. Mm. Yeah, we were drawn down into this sell side liquidity. That was pretty obvious now. Um, from a risk management perspective, the first entry was atrocious. Um, and it should have been one contract, not two. I've been generally very strict with that. Uh, but you can see I, I got greedy, went for two contracts. Had that been one contract, I actually would still be live right now. It's that It was that close. Believe it or not, it was that close. New week opening gap high. Had I not entered there, oh well. Um, we move on. Uh, the basic lesson is you know to keep flicking on your higher time frames to see where price could be drawing on a 30-minute hourly time. Uh, you're always looking for a counter argument to what your position is. Sometimes you just need to visually think about like does my trade entry make sense from a logical perspective like that did not make sense. It really did not make sense for price to stop there and turn around. Um, we've been in a very dense range and so you know sometimes you're gonna get lost in these really dense ranges. So I will be back for Thursday's trading. We will be taking on one contract at a time. We'll be trading pretty much the whole day. Uh, try and get that profit target back on Thursday and then hopefully profit target on Friday. If not, we will be resetting and uh, moving on. Uh, this account has a two times payout bonus with it. So you know, it's in my financial interest to continue to trade this account and not start another combine. Uh, and I need to show myself that I can have the impulse control not to trade further, not to reset the account. Uh, so we're going to be taking tomorrow off. I might paper trade it. I might just not. Glad it wasn't my trade station account, right? So. A pretty poor performance there on that trade. Uh, should not have entered in with two contracts at the start. Um, I really missed the draw on liquidity here. I really missed where price was going. I really um, had it during the Asian session and then so you know this was Asian session and you can see that I was cost averaging in to a position that was right there. I got out at a very good target you know near the high even another long here was successful but uh, draw on liquidity which are you know is the key what did I miss here a bearish breaker was telling you the story right there bearish breaker was telling you the story and it was telling you that it wanted to get this sell side liquidity. At this point, advanced gap theory and bearish breakers are, are definitely my preferred models um, to look out where price should go in the future. We have a particularly bearish day on tomorrow, Wednesday. Probably looking at coming down to the four, the five, maybe further. Maybe further. Well, I will not be participating. Mm. Very tough, but uh, I got to demonstrate that I have impulse control, and so I have enough money. I could afford to reset this account, uh, but I'm not going to. Uh, I've got another $2,176 of drawdown. That's enough to work with for a two to three contract position. It's enough for cost averaging into uh, new trades on Thursday. So. I will be back for Thursday's trading. I'm going to take a, a break from making videos. I've been pushing it really hard. So uh, it's going to be a break for me for at least it's going to be a, a day break. We'll be back tomorrow. 
uh, for the Asian session. And uh, this has been a review of some unfortunate trading. I missed the I missed the draw on liquidity. I took on two contracts and then two, you know, the cost averaging was not efficient. But if I had only had taken on one contract in the first atrocious, the first atrocious law, we'd actually be pretty much okay right now. But uh, yeah, we missed the draw of liquidity. We missed the draw of liquidity. It was definitely lower. It's definitely sell side. Two standard deviations of that breaker right there. High, low, higher, high. That swept into uh, intermediate term liquidity there. That's a very valid breaker right there. And for Wednesday's trading, I would hasten to guess that we're probably going down numerous standard deviations. But I've got to have this. I've got to have impulse control. And uh, oh, that's tough. Very tough. But I'm not going to buy another account. I'm not going to reset this account. Uh, I'm going to take my time. And if the rebuild time comes and i got to pay it, got to pay it. So I don't need to get funded tomorrow. I'm going to aim for a profit target tomorrow, but I don't need to get funded. If I have to get rebuild, I'll pay it and uh, work our way up there to express funded. I know what the game plan is now. Uh, we're going to be trading the NASDAQ. We're going to be focusing on uh, we are going to be focusing on advanced gap theory and advanced breaker block theory with the standard deviation projections that confirm liquidity or inefficiency targets. In terms of our uh, entry, our risk, or our risk management, we're going to be cost averaging or pyramiding into positions, uh, one contract at a time, uh, and taking risk off if the position you know starts to move too far against you you can follow these things for a while guy like you know you can do a lot of mitigation okay so let me give you an example you can start mitigating risk without a stop loss and I'll tell you how you know Say I take on these first two contracts at 336.75, and I can see that the market is really nowhere near turning. As the market is going down, I take those two off for a loss, you know, and follow the market down. Uh, just take losses on the way down. But as as we come down, we're adding on contracts at the standard deviations, and then mitigating. We're mitigating the losses uh, to follow the position. You know, you can do that. So you don't, you know. A stop loss is not your only form of risk management. You can uh, follow your trades, so to speak, uh, and just start exiting. If you see that your first entry is really terrible, uh, you can exit your first entry and and just take a loss on that, but keep following the position. It is an option. I'm not saying to do that, but I'm saying it is an option. And had I exercised that option and just closed out the first two, these first two contracts, We'd be, we'd be in a much better spot right now. So that, that was some mis risk management that I missed there. Shouldn't have been, it should not have been two contracts. It should have been one contract. And then as I saw that the position was coming down pretty hard against me, I should have closed out that unprofitable contract and waited, uh, waited until we reached a liquidity target and then uh, add on another long contract there and wait for a retracement to mitigate the position. And uh, we ended up ended up getting a retracement, so we didn't really have to take a loss on this. And I've got to learn to strike a balance. Um, you don't. Here's the thing, right? Everything is a balance. So just because I I took a losing day today, and it was it was bad, and I and I, uh, you know, I'm telling you my mistakes here. Okay, like I am telling you my mistakes and some ideas to rectify said mistakes so in the future because this is going to happen again I'm going to misread the market again I'm going to misread the draw on liquidity uh, so in the future we're going one contract at a time okay in terms of our entries sometimes you're going to get the absolute like where the market is going to turn and you're going to do that on one contract and that's fine we know that we're going to be focusing on advanced gap theory. 
We know that we're going to be focused on uh, advanced breaker block theory, uh, really to both sides of the marketplace, confirming our liquidity, our standard deviation projections, which are confirming liquidity, uh, liquidity or an efficiency targets. That's really going to be kind of our baseline, you know, getting in our getting an idea of where the market should be going. In terms of our risk management, we're going one contract at a time here on the NASDAQ. Um, I'm going to be down to three contracts, I think. So uh, that's going to be a pretty big risk mitigator, mitigator there anyways. Um, in terms of risk management, the stop, a, stop, a hard stop loss is not your only option. You can take off contracts as it goes against you and then re-add on the contracts. Okay. You can do that. I'm not saying you should do that, but that is a risk management option that I should have exercised here, especially with these first two contracts. Just exit them and then re-enter long later and wait for this retracement. Now, from my July 4th AM sessions and some other sessions I've noticed, if I've actually gotten the draw on liquidity incorrect, you got to strike a balance between following a trade because you can't give up on a trade idea, you know, the second like it's going against you. You can't. You also can't follow the idea too long. At some point you got to accept that you're you're wrong. So striking that balance is very difficult. But you have it's what you have to try to do. That's why you have to be looking at the market in both directions even when you're in a position. So talked about mitigating losses. We've talked about cost averaging into a position. Uh, we've talked about, you know, misevaluating the draw on liquidity, which has typically been, you know, why I've taken losses. Uh, we've talked about impulse control and not resetting the account. The account. Um, not buying a new combine. One, con one combine at a time. I'm not going to buy another one. Even with their sale right now, I'm not doing it. Uh, so we've talked about that. Talked about impulse control. Talked about risk management. Talk about entry models, which have generally been good, about where price should be going. There will be times that we do miss, we misevaluate where the market is drawing right now. So we've talked about risk, you know, risk mitigation. The other thing I've noticed is... Uh, I haven't really been employing the stop loss, the trailing stop that Michael uses. Uh, I've been getting better at using reasonable profit targets and actually taking profits. I haven't really been using the, the break even stop though. And if a position is like, like let's say for example that in this example, instead of going on two contracts that went on one, we cost average down. If a position, you know, goes 50 points against you and then it comes back to break even, you got to just close it out and wait for another idea. It could be in the opposite direction or it could be in your original direction. So if you have a trade that really goes against you like a lot and then it comes back to break even, like a good rule of thumb is as soon as you see it come back to break even, like this thing is run against you 40 or 50 points. Like it's really bad. It's a very bad situation. The market usually will have a retracement at some point. And so what you need to do is if, if you have a very bad position, you know you didn't you, you got something wrong in your analysis. This is what I've not been doing. Is it goes, you know, forty or fifty points of drawdown against you and then it comes back, you gotta close it out. You gotta close it out and uh, try again later. Okay. I've had that happen to me a number of times. And unfortunately, I get greedy, and I want to see a position that was in drawdown 50 points all come all the way back and profit 50 points, and you know, that hasn't really worked out. So, another risk management and uh, improvement that I have to make is if and when an unprofitable position in which it is clear to me at that point that I have misevaluated something, if it retraces back and brings me back to break even, close just close it out. Just close it out. Take a scratch, move on to the next trade, wait for another trade idea, reevaluate, 
I should have done that today during the July 4th AM session. I had I ended up taking a thousand dollar loss that at one point that trade came all the way back to break even, even in a small profit. And it's better to take a small profit or a break even than a large loss. So during July 4th holiday AM session, I had a trade that was going pretty badly against me, came back to break even, small profit, and I kept following the trade idea when the market was clearly telling me, you know, it wasn't coming all the way back to my profit targets. It really, you know, I, I missed something, which is going to happen. I'm going to miss stuff. I'm not Michael. Uh, I should have just closed that trade out. Break even. So, again, trade runs. You got something wrong. It's running 40, 50, 60 points against you. Like, it's a bad trade. And that thing, you've dollar cost averaged in, so you've mitigated risk, right? You're not entering all at once. It comes back, it retraces, uh, you get back to break even, close that bitch out, like get out. So okay, um, those are the lessons learned from this. Uh, I don't want to make a whole lot of videos like this, but uh, I've got to have impulse control. Got a bad headache right now, not happy with what happened here. But uh, I'm not going to chase it. Right now, every inch of my soul wants to buy a reset and get right back in it. But I'm not going to. I'm going to control my impulses and wait until tomorrow. If I have to reset tomorrow, I, I hit the actual limit, right? So if I get to you know 150k here, the last. 2.1k here if I if I do draw that all the way down okay at that point I will buy a reset because I'm determined to do this so I at that point I will but not before then so we still got we've still got profit to work with we've got a 2.1k drawdown to work with that's one two three contracts uh, so this you know it is what it is all right that's been a recap of today's trades. Uh, I'm going to be taking a break until tomorrow's Asian session. So, bye-bye.